What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our 2023 schedule preview projected record series. The Vanderbilt Commodores are up next. Before we get to 2023, let's look back at 2022. Here was the schedule from 2022 for Vanderbilt. A surprise team really last year going five and seven. You saw it right away when they beat Hawaii. You saw the way they played in that game. You could tell this was a different Vanderbilt team. Of course, they had a tough stretch there from Alabama to South Carolina, but then shocked a lot of people and when they upset Kentucky on the road, then beat Florida. I mean, those were two huge wins, and they were just one win away from making it to a bowl game. Again, a schedule that featured Hawaii, Elon, Wake Forest, and North Northern Illinois in the non-conference. And last year, they played course Ole Miss who they play every year out of the West and also had to play Alabama so let's fast forward to 2023 these are the games that they'll play outside of the division once again they will play Hawaii this time at home they get Alabama A&M Wake Forest on the road and UNLV on the road so yes they're going to go out west and play UNLV they'll play Ole Miss on the road this year and they'll get Auburn at home so they trade Alabama this time it'll be Auburn a much easier draw there uh, so let's go week by week and take a look at this schedule they'll start off with that game against Hawaii it'll actually be a week zero game so you'll get to see Vanderbilt a week early playing Hawaii at home uh, then after that they'll play Alabama A&M on September the 2nd so an, another opportunity to start off 2-0 and then it'll be Wake Forest on uh, September the 9th on the road Sam Hartman is gone but still Wake Forest probably going to be favored in that game but maybe it's a winnable game for Vanderbilt and then UNLV on the road on September 16th so there's a chance that this team could start 4-0 and and really build some confidence and even beyond that after that they play Kentucky on September 23rd and Missouri on September 30th both at home so I mean it it's not too crazy to think that Vanderbilt could start 5-1 and or 6-0 and potentially um, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but the schedule does set up in a way that gives them a shot. And interesting, they play half of their games, six of their games before the month of October. I believe Notre Dame also had this on their schedule. But yeah, half the schedule already over with before they get to the month of October, which is crazy. They do go into October with a road game at Florida. Of course, that'll be a revenge game for the Gators. Could be a tough one there. And then Georgia on October the 14th at home. And then they get their first bye week. So they get two bye weeks, and the first one does not come until October 21st. They get that bye week before playing Ole Miss on the road on October the 28th. And then it'll be Auburn on November 4th at home. So you're, you're getting into that grind, of course, in the SEC uh, from Kentucky, Missouri, Florida, Georgia, Ole Miss, Auburn. That's what happens when you play all four of your non-conference games first. Then you're going to have all of the conference games in a row. So after Auburn, they'll play uh, South Carolina on the road. Going to be a tough one there, of course. And then they get their other bye week the week before rivalry weekend. So again, they have two bye weeks because they play week zero. But both of those bye weeks come late in the season, which is really interesting. Uh, they'll finish things up on the road at Tennessee. So you've got back-to-back -back road games there with South Carolina and Tennessee. But... They do get a bye week in between those two games. So, you know, you look at this schedule again, the first six games, it starts off pretty nice. I mean, they've got a shot. They've got a shot to, to get off to a really good start. You know, it, it, is it even possible that Vanderbilt could start 6-0 and but finish 6-6 six and six and lose their final games? I mean, that's what, what I'm seeing here on the schedule. But again, Kentucky, Missouri, Wake Forest, those are not going to be easy wins. Uh, Vandy will probably be underdogs in all three of those games. So I'm not saying that they're going to win those games, but they'll have a chance uh, if they're, you know, just based off of what they did last year, they'll have a chance, I think, in those three games. And if they can get off to a good start, even three and two, or, or I should say four and two or five and one, uh, then, then find another win or two late. Maybe, maybe, just maybe Vanderbilt could make it to a bowl game with this schedule in 2023. Vanderbilt's projection last season was 2-10. So they went 5-7, projected to go 2-10. Definitely beat the projection last year by a lot. Will they do it again this year? Well, the projection is going to be a little bit higher. We'll get into that. Uh, first, this is the scale that we'll be using. If it's a 50-50 game, that's a game where I think the spread will be less than a touchdown, 40-60%. to 60%. If it's less than 20 or over 80, 
Those are games where I think the spread will be 20 or more. In the orange here, 20 to 29. And in the blue, 71 to 80. Those are games where I think the spread will be double digits, 10 to 19 points. And then 30 to 39, 61 to 70. Those are games where I think the spread will be about a touchdown, six, seven, eight, maybe nine points in that range. And you know, usually Vanderbilt, they don't even, they don't have any guaranteed wins on, on their schedule. Usually there's, I mean, even an FCS team, it's not guaranteed that they're going to beat them easily. But this Vanderbilt team really changed last year. They became a decent team. You know, one they won a couple of SEC games, went five and seven, like I mentioned. And uh, I think there's really no reason to, to think that Vanderbilt cannot at least be a similar team this year. And because of that, I think you can give them at least one guaranteed win, and that's Alabama a and I don't think that they uh, really have any problem with that one. Uh, they should roll in that game. In fact, we're going to go Hawaii and UNLV as well. So, you know, Alabama a is closer to like 99%. Hawaii and UNLV may be closer to... 85%, 90% in that range. But I do think Vandy will be favored by uh, at least 20 points in these three games. I really do. So three wins for Vanderbilt. Three three guaranteed wins. We're not going to say guaranteed, but almost guaranteed wins for them this year, which is more than they were projected to win total last year. So that tells you how far this Vanderbilt team has come. Uh, you look at other games here on the, other, the flip side of this, games where they really don't have much of a chance. I think they will be a double-digit underdogs in these games, and that's Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Um, really just just not much of a chance that they win these games. They do get Georgia at home. Uh, you could could maybe even put that game in the red. Uh, I mean, they, they just don't have much of a chance in that game. South Carolina and Tennessee on the road, those games will also be really, really tough. So three games that you can pretty much count as losses, three games that you can count as wins, and then you got – the other six games, they win them all. Hey, they could go nine and three, but they could also lose them all, and they could go three and nine. So which way will it go? Uh, well, let's continue on here with the games, uh, other games that they'll be underdogs in, and these are games that I think they'll be the be about a six, seven, eight, nine point underdog in, and that's Wake Forest, Kentucky, Florida, Ole Miss, and Auburn. So I do think Vanderbilt will be a clear underdog in all of these games. Wake Forest is interesting. We know Sam Hartman, but I still think Vandy on the road. They'll be seven or eight-point underdogs. Kentucky, they'll be underdogs there. Even though they did win last year, Kentucky overall still a better team. Uh, and Florida on the road, kind of the same story there. Plus playing on the road, that's that's going to be a tough one. Ole Miss on the road will be tough. Auburn, they do get them at home. But, yeah, I think Vandy will be about a touchdown underdog in these games. Maybe some of them they turn out to be double-digit underdogs, like maybe Ole Miss, they're – 10 or 11 points but it's so early you know once we get into the season obviously these numbers are going to change but looking at it right now i think these games are close enough that you could put them there in the yellow and then that leaves missouri missouri is the one 50 50 game and when you do the projection you get five and seven so five and seven the exact same projection as as what they were last season uh, i do think missouri's a better team than vanderbilt but Home field advantage may be enough to, to lean that one towards more of a 50-50 game. I think Missouri will be favored by three or four points. You know, it really just depends on Vanderbilt. Are they the team? Are they kind of like we saw last year? Are they a team that is pretty competitive, or do they go back to what they were before uh, with some of the losses that you know that they'll have this off season? It's hard to it's hard to know. It's hard to know. I mean, they really surprised us all last year in doing what they did. So I think five and seven. Um, that's a pretty solid projection if you're a Vanderbilt fan. If you can find a way to win one more of these games, get to 6-6, six and six, get to a bowl game, that would be a huge success for Vandy. But uh, projection, same as their record in 2022. They are projected to go 5-7 and seven in 2023.